Uh, the trade deadline passed uh, earlier. Uh, no moves by the Saints. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm trying to determine what the question would be, but I guess were you guys called? Did you guys get calls? Well, we talked to a couple um, teams about a couple of things, more in the acquisition area as opposed to trading somebody. We weren't. We didn't really talk about trading anyone. Um, from our team, but we did talk to a couple teams about an acquisition, but um, I wouldn't say it ever got really serious. So you see kind of two schools of thought during this time, like Washington gets, they, they deal Montez Sweat, who you will face this week, assuming he plays also Chase Young. They get a second rounder in 24 and a third rounder. I mean, I guess teams that are somewhat position heavy and just looking for some draft capital. Yeah, um, I think a lot of it determine, is determined by, you know, how, how you see the, the season playing out. Um, and then you look at the, you know, your roster and, and the team, the guys that are coming, um, coming up as free agents and whether, you know, what's your opportunity to re-sign them. There, there's a lot of factors that go into making a, a decision on, on trading a player. And then on the other side of that, it's, say hey, who can help us now, um, you know, accomplish our short-term goals. Um, or, you know, in some cases, um, you want an opportunity to have a player in your system and, and make a decision on having them for the long term. There, there seems to be, and maybe this is arbitrary, but there seems to be more movement in other leagues around the trade deadline of the NFL. Is that just based on, because, in you know, a trade deadline in the NBA, one, one guy in, in, in the NHL can make significant impacts whereas in the nfl it's it seems a little more difficult i'm just curious yeah but i you know i never really looked at it from the standpoint of us versus another league i do think this you know when you have a hard cap that makes things a little more difficult um to absorb a contract you know at this time of the year because typically a lot of teams including us are are you know up against the cap and so you have to maneuver um in order to add somebody um you don't generally don't want to take away um, salary cap from a future year. So it, it's just a, a little more diff- difficult logistically. And I'm, I'm not saying it had any impact on anything financially, but it, it was always, I'm probably the only guy that, that finds out. I'm the first guy Saturday that asks your team about practice squad elevations because I'm trying to get my board set. Uh, and you didn't have any this week. And I knew, and I knew you had the bug kind of going through, and it's been a while. I'd have to go back. I'm just, you know, not to have any practice squad elevations. Well, one, to me, it says that your team's in pretty good shape health-wise, and it just wasn't – you're not going to do it just for the heck of it because it counts as an activation. Right. Yeah, we have limitations on on activations. We did talk about uh, activating a player, um, and yet it ultimately came down to, well, let's save the activation – um, for a time that's a little more critical. It, it, and you're right, you know, we've, we've been a team that, that uh, almost every week we're going to have an elevation, if not two. Um, and I think most teams are in that category, particularly once you get past the first four weeks of the season because you've got a lot of players that are banged up. In our case, we had, you know, a bit of a, 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 a virus go through our team and we had a lot of guys that were ailing and yet, man, a lot of guys that, that had the bug found a way to um, to suit up and play on Sunday. Just curious, before we take the break, did that impact the administration? Did it go through with the building, or was it kind of limited to the locker room? Yeah, we had a couple um, upstairs that were sick, but fortunately we we're not counting on those guys on Sunday for the most part. <laughs> when you guys went out and signed Rashid Shahid, uh, as an undrafted free agent, paid him a little more, paid him, I think, 222 total. And I think he made 705 his first year. Now he's making, you know, 870, no prorated bonuses, no roster bonuses. Wow. What, what, I mean, great job for that. If your administration, the scouting department, I mean, I, that's just a, what, what a find, right? Yeah. That, well, look, that's a credit to, um, you know, the area scouts and, and the guys that are out there, you know, looking at every player at every school and, and finding some characteristics that they like. And, you know, he was, he was a good player and, and was identified early on. We talked about drafting him, you know, late in the draft and, and, uh, um, 
you know, luckily we, we, you know, we had, we had some scouts that had a good relationship with the player and with his, with his agent and, and um, you know, Darren Rizzi and the special teams coaches were involved in that as well, because we really saw him first as a returner um, a receiver second. And so we've been, I would say we've been pleasantly surprised how quickly he's developed as a receiver. And that's a credit to our coaches and, and, um, to Rashid himself.